today you can see I'm working with one of my favorite tools, the straight edge razor. And um, I'm gonna be working on longer hair, um, you know, a looser, more creative approach, um, working a little bit kind of free form around the face. You can see here how I'm working pieces in this just like dropped out section in front of the ear. Um, and here's where I'm kind of creating a face frame. So I'm going a little bit longer in my starting position each time, one, two, three, and a little bit longer in my finishing position. And this just makes kind of a very free form face frame, um, just to kind of loosen it up and take the edge off. Works really, really well, obviously, with a straight edge razor. I'm working on the Nadine mannequin today, which is a beautiful, luscious, long head of thick hair that comes kind of in a pre-layered shape already. So it can be great for styling. It can be great for coloring, permanent waving, uh, but also great for cutting. But it doesn't have to be cut. If you want to keep it long and you know already have some pre-layering in it, it's awesome. Um, Pivot Point has basically just relaunched their whole um, web store at pivot.point.com. I'm sorry, pivot slash, not pivot dash. It's dashpoint.com. Um, and in celebration of that, if you're paying attention, which I hope that you are, you can get a 15% discount if you use the code web dash hairbrain 15. 15 per, unless it's already on sale, you can't double dip. But if you're looking to buy great mannequins or tripods right now, Kelly, you're gonna write that in there? Web dash hairbrain 15, only to, up until November 1st, so you have to do it right away. And it's at pivot-point.com. Um, and I'll mention that a few times for you guys as I'm teaching the lesson here. All right, so you can see what, what's been created. Um, face frame just kind of cut in individual pieces. I'm gonna go through and actually just use a little bit more slicing, what I like to call slicing, which is just using the razor deeper in the hair, kind of with the vertical grain of the hair, just to take out a little bit more weight. Um, I've already pre-done one side here, just so you can see the, the idea. So we're getting a nice loose face frame. And then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do these layers. And we're gonna cut in a nice full fringe and we're also gonna layer it up here. So getting creative with the layering. You know, I haven't done something like this in a while, so that's kind of the whole idea of this um, series that we've been doing now, proud to say for a few years with our friends at Pivot Point. The idea is we get people who are experienced professionals who still believe that it's really important to practice to stay at the top of your craft. Um, Yesterday I was working with another hairdresser, Wes Sharpton, um, and he was working using this type of layering technique with the razor, which I know a lot of people find difficult, myself included. You know, I like to call it backhand razoring, which you have to turn your hand backwards. A lot of times when we razor, we razor more in natural fall, um, but if we want to elevate and really get a lot of great layers, you kind of have to get comfortable turning the razor around backhand, like I'm doing here. And that's definitely something you want to practice. Um, and if you're going to do it on long hair, which is probably the most beneficial use of the technique, right? Because you want to be able to lift that hair up nice and high, protect some of the length, let some of it drop away. Like we're doing here, coming up, great tension, find your guide, your shortest point, and then these vertical strokes with the edge of the blade out to the length. You want to make sure that it doesn't just drop away without a nice fluid finish. So I'm just gonna go over some of these pieces right here by the bottom. You can see how that maintains all the length. Now that was a brand new guideline. So this is technically disconnected from this. I'm um, taking about one inch sections, nothing overly thin here because, um, you know, I want kind of a chunky quality to the hair. And with this type of cutting, if the sections are too thin, it'll just get too airy and too kind of blasted out. Sections are about one inch thick. Um, on the sides, I was working out a little more square. Then as the head starts to turn, I turned with the head a little bit. So it's a little bit squarer here to build a little bit more weight towards the back of the ear. Now I'm walking around with the shape a little bit more. Again, pivoting my section. You can see I took a triangle. There's two triangles really. One for what's going to be the fringe, and then one for the layers on the top. You know, I wanted to, so very often we just get layers on the top, and we don't get enough around the perimeter. Um, and I think with the like, kind of modern, longer layers, 
but it's really important to see a little bit more action below the rounds of the head and working almost all the way to the length of the hair. Are you using the same guideline that you've been using, th that you've established on the side? Yeah, so the first part around the face, that was free form, that did not create a guideline. You know, that's kind of a separate, if I pull this back, that was a separate free form piece. Then I started a technical guideline right here. And the two don't technically connect. Just gives it a little bit more separation and playfulness. So again, working with uh, long hair today, this is the Nadine from our friends at Pivot Point. Now, um, we, put, we sent out an email blast today. If you're not on our email list, you want to get on it. Um, you can go to any one of our, any one of our properties, hblive.me, hairbrain.me, um, hairbrain.pro, and you can join our mailing list. Um, of course, we let you know about sales and things like that. And we also share interesting stuff from our, our partners. So today we share, people always wonder how these mannequins are made. Um, first thing I can tell you about Pivot Point is that they're made ethically, which is a big deal because um, to be honest, most of this type of stuff, mannequins, they come from Asia and some other third world countries where you know people can do very nefarious business practices. Um, but Pivot Point is such a reputable company, they've been around for so long, that they are certified as what's called an SA, I think it's 8,000 or 2,000 company. It means that all over the world they, they treat their employees fairly, pay them a fair living wage. Um, and at the new website, the pivot-point.com, they have some different videos that shows um, how the mannequins are made, the people that have been made by, talks a little bit about this qualification that they have. They talk to some of the workers about how working for Pivot Point really has given them lives that they couldn't even dream of. So, you know, not only are we doing incredible things, um, or Pivot, is Pivot Point doing incredible things by making great quality tools that we can learn with, but they're doing it in a way that's so important nowadays, a way that you can feel happy and proud to be affiliated with them and know that, you know, they're doing it in such an ethical way. So I added a little bit of salt spray from our friends at Paul, Paul Mitchell, another great sponsor of ours. This is from the Aopui line. Now I'm adding a little bit of the Hydro Mist, I'm sorry, Hy Hydro Whip, I believe it's called. Hydro Cream Whip. Nice. Um, I like to add the product as I go with stuff like this because I'm really, I want to see it start to develop as it dries. Um, because to me, you know, there, there should be one look in the hair. As soon as you're finished cutting, there should be a look just from the cut itself. Of course, you can do other things after that, but the cut itself should be a style. Okay, now we're going to work into the bang. I'm just going to grab a towel real quick, wipe my hands down. So you may have noticed I'm working with a straight edge razor. Uh, what's known as a straight edge razor, uh, but any razor, you know, will work. It really is up to the person that's using it. And this one particularly is the plie. This is the feather plie. Yep, it's available at hairbrain.pro. It's just, uh, I think people that really fall in love with the razor and um, really want to kind of push it as far as they can tend to really fall in love with this blade. Um, now, it can be used with a guard. I prefer to use it without a guard because I feel like I get a lot more sharpness and control. So another thing I love here about great quality mannequins is that, you know, the hair texture and the hair lines are like real hair. So there might be a little bit of a calic there, like a real, real head of hair would have, but it's not gonna be like one of these cheap mannequins that just stick straight out that you can't even cut a bang. Now I want the bang to be a little bit heavier. Everything else is so loose and soft I'm gonna work a little bit heavier here. I'm gonna use my blade in a flatter way and in kind of a closed way. So I'm coming in with a, almost a flat stroke and a very small up and down motion. So getting a line that just has a little bit of um, softness on it. Why did you choose to use bang instead of fringe today? Well, they're interchangeable words. I mean, I'm American, um, and I was raised with the term bang, although I sometimes use the word fringe. 
Um, they're interchangeable, really. It's not a technical term. In Germany, they call it a pony. So different cultures use different names, um, but it's all whatever, whatever floats your boat. Sometimes I'll say fringe, sometimes I'll say bang. But never pony. <laughs> if I'm working, talk to a German, I might, they might tell me about their pony. I can remember I tell this story a lot. When I was a young hairdresser starting, I was on Fifth Avenue uh, in Manhattan working up at Al Sassoon, and we had a very international clientele. And one of my first clients was like a German flight attendant. She kept talking about her pony, her pony, her pony. And I had no idea what she was talking about. I said, she's, she's really crazy. She either has a pony that she loves or she's just completely batshit. Um, but then later I learned that a pony, um, a lot of Germans use that in, instead of the word fringe or bang. And then they carry it over when they speak English. All right, so you can see here. So this is important when working flat with the razor. If I don't, if I, if I don't want a lot of graduation on the line, I have to give myself a little space. You see the guideline? I come through, I give myself a little space, I get the comb in there, and then the blade, it's not completely flat because that can kind of pull the hair, uh, but it's flat enough that I can work a lot more of a line, a razor line. Could you go in here and cut this with the scissors? Sure. Um, but you, get, you definitely begin to appreciate slightly different qualities that you get with each tool. You know, what I love here is it's already got like a little bit of a, a grown in quality, which can be harder to get with the scissor. You'd have to work a lot harder with pointing and you know, we're here, it's just supernatural. Is this a square bang? Yeah, I would call it a square bang or a square fringe or a square pony or whatever other term you wanna come up with. Yeah, so for it to be square, I cut one, two, three. So I follow, it's kind of interesting, I follow the curve of the head for it to appear square. If I was to just cut square, then it would drop down in the corners and it would be rounder. Um, and you know, an extreme version of that is what we're kind of calling like a curtain bang. Or this is a full fringe or a square fringe or a square bang. So then I come over here and again, I cut with the roundness of the head. Just moving your body position. I'm moving my body position and cutting a straight line here. You know, so the idea being that it doesn't dip down a lot into the corner. If I wanted it to dip down in the corner, I would stand in front of it and pull it forward, either a little or a lot. Same here. Now I'm not gonna do much weight removal or any weight removal on the bang. No slicing or tipping or pointing because I want there to be a little bit of contrast between the rest of the shape and the bang or the fringe here. Again, seeing how that's drying, getting it to mix and mingle, looking at how the layers are always kind of just picking them up. I mean, look at this beautiful texture on the Nadine. Now this hair has already been, uh, high, this was used, Nadine was used already for a full head highlight lesson. So she's got a beautiful classic foil highlight in there. Um, and then I'm repurposing her for this cut. But you can see, you know, there's such a beautiful density in the hair. Um, such a wonderful texture, you know, that, that's the thing. I, I've taught so many classes, literally, you know, I've been to a thousand salons in the past 30 years. And every once in a while you get, you know, I always say, I always have said, you know, get a pivot point, get the Josephine, get the Viola, get the Nadine. Uh, but sometimes, you know, inevitably people decide to get something cheaper. And I have to be honest, the learning experience is never the same. If you don't have the right head of hair, the right texture, the right quality. Um, You're just you know, fighting with it. Yeah, and it just kind of spoils the whole class. And I'm like, okay, so you saved, you know, 30, 40, $50, even $100, right? Because some of these good mannequins, they can be $150. But if you have an educator come in and you're working, now you should be able to get a lot out of it. This had a full hot highlight on it. Now it's gonna have one cut. I, I'll probably be able to get five or six haircuts out of this. Um, or you could keep it and use it for styling forever. Um, I do wanna remind you, I said I've mentioned it a few times, head to pivot-point.com. That's Pivot Point's newly refreshed online store website that has everything about them. There's great videos there on, um, on the brand in general, education-based and also kind of culture-based and also about how they manufacture these incredible mannequins. Um, so I, I definitely encourage you to check that out. Um, 
But you also, if you want to get yourself some tripods like this one, universal tripod, it's another thing people cheap out on. Sometimes I went to a class once and everyone had like 12 inch tall tripods that they bought on Amazon. They thought, oh, what a great deal. And then they actually got it and they were like, okay, now I know why it's such a great deal. Um, indestructible, made from quality metals, quality hard plastics, makes all the difference. All right, so I'm going into this triangle on the top. I'm over directing towards the center. I'm starting from a shorter point in the front with that backhand razor in a very open, deep stroke and working out to a longer point in the back. I wanna make sure the shorter point in the front doesn't fall longer than the bang at this point because then you know it'll just be a little too disconnected. Not what I'm going for. It's, it falls longer in the back, so I'll probably have to do some refining in the back. Yeah, the code for the discount uh, there is um, web-hairbrain15. Web-hairbrain15. So if you head over to the pivot-point.com store, you can stock up on some great stuff right now. Now it's only until November 1st. Okay, looking good. So you can see what I mean, the layers fall over, but they don't fall longer than anything around the face. But I do have to kind of take the hair that falls over the back here, right? Because this was the longest point. And to be quite honest, you can almost have like a little bit of a tail here with this particular shape. Let me check it through one more time. Just making sure that we've got a nice fluidity. So I feel like there's even a few longer pieces there. And I'll check it here. And then we're gonna work on making it mingle much more with the underneath layers. Good. Now, what I wanna do is come through and bring this hair out basically like perpendicular to the floor, like so. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna see like what we would call concave, short to long. And I'm gonna go into it and use slicing. And then the most important place to use slicing is where the layering from the top meets the layering from the bottom. It's literally right there, if you remember where the triangle was. In here, I wanna go in a little bit deeper. I wanna really work my way through even a little bit more. So what that does is that layer now will mesh with the layers on the bottom. It's not that I wanted to totally technically blend or I would have chosen a different approach. I can cut very traditional. I can blend everything if I want. Here, I want the movement and the exaggeration that I get from disconnection, but I don't want it to just look like it's something that doesn't have any relationship. So this is the key right here. When you have something overhanging something else, when you have hair overhanging other hair, look at that. So I did this side, but not this side. And look at the difference. Now we'll just do the same on this side. How do you know that you're taking the correct amount and, and not too much or not too little? Is it just by eye? Well, so of course the first thing is practice. And again, that's why it's so great to work with great mannequins. If you're not worked in this manner or whenever you want to try something, if you get a great mannequin, it'll help you train your eye. And I'll be honest, it, you know, Generally, when I first do something, I tend to be too aggressive. So I always love that I try it out on a mannequin when I have an idea, or I see someone, like I saw my buddy Wes Sharpton yesterday cutting, and I was like, oh, I wanna try some of those ideas. I'm so glad that I can kind of jump onto a mannequin, um, and a quality mannequin, and practice. So, you know, first things first is always practice, professionals who practice. All the hairdressers that I know that are the best at what they do or are constantly practicing, if you look in their, in their bedroom, in their garage, in their studio, they've got dozens and dozens of mannequins that they're just kind of trying ideas out on. You know, that was the whole idea behind this um, series that we started a few years ago. And we've had some great, incredible hairdressers, you name them, and we had them. And they all said, yeah, I practice and I use Pivot Point. That's one thing that pretty much every great educator has in common. So working a little bit more of the Awapui products into the hair, the salt spray, and a little bit of the hydro cream. I think this is looking great. 
I'm gonna put a little bit of heat on it with the dryer just so we can see um, how the shape works out. I think you can see it's a beautiful lean shape. I'd say one of the things you really need to practice on with this kind of cutting is to be able to get your balance on. You know, so I kind of really thought it through before I even started where I was going to stand. I really visualized where my shortest pieces were going to fall. This can be very easy when you work free form like this to lose your balance. So using my YS Clark uh, sock, my ion sock, ionic diffuser, using downward heat, and really not disturbing the hair, just pinching, making sure the air is getting through the hair and you're getting to dry. Keeping that airflow going down, not forcing the hair. And this will really tell me what my haircut, how, how well it's worked. I won't be able to disguise anything. So these mannequins, they're 100% human hair. So they can actually really stand up to styling, uh, whether it be diffusing or using hot tools. That's important as well to know. Sometimes we'll buy a mannequin and you won't know that there's a lot of synthetic hair or nylon uh, and it will respond or it'll actually melt and then you're really in trouble. So very important, you know, um, Pivot Point does have a few mannequins that have different types of hair. It tells you where it comes from. Uh, they have some that have like some animal hair on them. Um, but for the majority, especially the ones that I really use and recommend, they're 100% human hair. Uh, Esma's on here and she's saying she's loving it. She's loving your haircut. Who's that? Uh, Esma. Oh, right on. Thanks for joining us. Really a simple haircut and you know, great news, this will be saved here and you guys can watch it at any time. Pick it apart, think, you know, what if I try this, what if I try that? And you know, if you go back through, you'll see that many of our lessons feature pivot point mannequins. So, you know, you can make a game plan right now and we always mention what mannequin it is. You can go ahead and order that mannequin Go to pivot-point.com, order that mannequin, use the web-hairbrain15 code, save 15%. And if you were to buy two or three mannequins this week, you know, for the next eight months, because you can get five or six lessons out of the mannequin if you plan it out, um, you, you, you know, be great for your, for your next, you know, especially with the new year coming, you're gonna have some downtime. And guys, don't forget how important a good tripod is. There's nothing worse than trying to practice and the tripod isn't any good. This is the universal tripod. See, I customized it with some stickers from my hairdresser friends all over the world. And these things last if you take care of them. And if you don't take care of them... They still kind of last. You, yeah, they still last and you can get replacement pieces. So, you know, which is also, I think a lot of people don't know that. Sometimes they'll break a, a dial or something. You can go on the pivot-point uh, website and look for replacement parts. And they, you know, they all just screw on and screw off. So you can see this uh, full head of highlights that was done, very classic. Uh, the haircut's not super classic, but the color is. Sometimes that's a good way to mix and match things. This was done by Kat Burke, uh, Kat, Catherine Burker. Uh, she's done quite a great series called um, Intensive Coloring, which is at our hblive.me online academy. If you love these little kind of pick up Facebook lives and you have never checked out our online academy, go to hblive.me so you can see what it's like when we have multiple cameras and a great studio. Um, and there's editing, you know, we take this to that next level. We're getting that heat in there, moving it around. You know, this, at this point, I'd really be looking in the mirror and really just kind of thinking about what, if anything, else needs to be done. 
you know, with the cutting, with the styling, am I going to pull out a hot tool, uh, curl wand, is there anything else that needs to be cut into? I love the way, again, the heaviness and the bang is allowing it to be very kind of cool and flexible. I think I've got that where I want it. I'll take just a tiny, tiny little bit more of this um, cream for moisture. This is the Awapui Hydro Cream. And we'll just kind of work that into the ends.